Hello, my name is RD and we are going to solve problem 63. So, the problem is a stone is thrown vertically upward with a high speed of 15.5 meter per second from the edge of a cliff 75 meters high, like in this figure here, figure 247. And the questions are, how much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff? B. What is its speed just before hitting? And C. What is the total distance did it travel? Okay, let's analyze the figure here and let's write out what we know. We know that the initial speed here is 15.5. So this man here is throwing a stone up with an initial velocity of 15.5. So V0 is equal to 15.5 and the unit is meter per second okay and the stone will goes up and eventually it will stop and then falling right and let's assume that when the stones goes up here the distance traveled is d1 and then the time traveled is t1 okay this is when the stone is going up and then eventually the stone will stop here. Remember, when the stone is stopping, its velocity will be zero, right? So this P is equal to zero meter per second. Okay, maybe let's name this as P1. Okay, and then it will fall here into the ocean and just before it goes into the ocean, we will have the, its maximum velocity, right? So we will have V2 there. And this is what is us in the equation of B, right? And then let's assume another variable here. So from the one, the place the stone stop until just when it hits the ocean here it will be the distance will be d2 and then the time traveled here will be t2 so we are looking for this one a how much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff so the question for question a is this t1 and this t2 right and we sum we add up all of them so t total that will be T1 plus T2. And then B is this one here, which is the final velocity before it hits the water. So we will have B is V2. Okay, so this is the, which one is us. And then what else? What is the total distance it travel? So C, the distance total is just the distance it going up and then the distance it going down, right? So I will have D1 plus D2. Okay, we need to know all of them. So we need to know T1, T2, D1, and D2, right? Okay, so now what can we do? We analyze when the stone is going up and when the stone is falling okay let's do exactly that when the stone is going up okay it start with this initial velocity 15.5 and then it stops with the final velocity of zero meter per second and remember that only gravity acts on it so i will have this formula here, Vt, is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. We can use this formula here. And the final velocity here is the V1 here. And then I will have the initial velocity is 15.5. So we'll have 15.5. And then plus, because the... Velocity is getting smaller or the 
stone is getting slower so the velocity the acceleration will be negative and the value is g because only gravity work on the stone right so i will have minus g and then t the time so the time is t1 okay now we know that v1 is zero so we'll have zero here and we will have 15.5 and plus and minus becomes minus g is 9.8 meter per second square and then t1 okay from here we can isolate for t1 so i'll have 9.81 is equal to 15.5 therefore t1 is 15.5 divided by 9.8 and so we will have our t1 i think this is the job of our calculator so we'll have 15.5 divided by 9.8 so that will be 1.58 second okay 1.58 second okay and this is an important value so let's save this first and from here we can calculate d1 here so how to do that remember that the distance is equal to v0 t plus one half a acceleration t square <coughs> okay now the distance here is this d1 so we'll have d1 d1 and then v0 the initial velocity is 15.5 so i'll have 15.5 and then the time that will be 1.58 then plus one half the acceleration is minus 9.8 because that is the gravity and make it slower and then i will have 1.58 square Okay, because this is the t1 okay i think that is the job of our calculator let's do exactly that so we will have 15.5 multiplied by 1.58 and then plus one half okay one half and then multiplied by minus 9.8 and then multiplied by 1 0.58 and then squared okay i will have 12.25 so i will have 12.26 i think 12.26 and the unit will be meter okay so so far we have the t1 and d1 okay maybe let's save the value of t1 and d1 and let's move on to d other when the stones is falling okay let's do exactly that but let's clean up the slide first okay now let's work out the part when the stone is falling okay let's do exactly that when the stone is falling okay first that we can notice is this one here uh, the distance traveled between when the stone going up until this one going here it's symmetrical right so here we can actually draw parallel here as d1 and then the second one we actually given the value from the problem right because this is the height of the cliffs so we will have 75 meters here okay and what can we infer from here we know that the distance here from this part to this part is d2 is equal to d1 plus the height of the cliff which is 75 meters okay and what is d1 that will be 12.26 so i will have 12 Point twenty six and then plus seventy five, and I will have 
this will be I think 89 yeah 89.26 meter okay and that is D2 okay now what is the time of T2 right because we already know D1 we already T1 we already know D2 okay now our task is to find out T2 right and again similar to that part we can use the S formula which is V0 T plus one half the acceleration multiplied by T square okay okay and the distance here is d2 so i will have 96 point i mean 89.26 and then v0 remember that this is start from here so this will equal to zero so i'll have this equal to zero and so we will have one half here and then the acceleration the gravity working to make this stone accelerate so we have the positive value so we will have 9.8 and then the t is t2 right so i'll have t2 square okay let's isolate t2 square so i'll have t2 square is equal to 2 multiplied by 989.26 divided by 9.8 so we will have t2 is the square root of 2 multiplied by 89.26 divided by 9.8 okay i think that will be the job of our calculator Let's now get T2. <coughs> what is T2? It is the square root of 2 multiplied by 89.26 divided by 9.8. So we'll have 4.27 second. 4.27 second. Okay, so now we have D2 and t2 so we have finally have d1 t1 d2 and t2 all that we need to do is wrapping that up okay let's do exactly that okay so far we have t1 d1 t2 and d2 okay so what can we do is just plug that in into this part here the question A asking about how much later it reached the bottom of the cliff, but then it's just the sum of T1 and T2. So I'll have T1 plus T2. So we will have T1 that is 1.58 and then T2 that will be 4.27. And so that will be, I will have 1.58 plus 4.27 that should be 5.85 5.85 and the unit here will be second and this is our first answer and then question b what is its speed just before hitting remember that we can use this formula here vt is the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by t okay and the initial acceler initial speed is zero so i will have zero here and the acceleration is the gravity and it's positive because it's getting faster so i will have 9.8 and then the time is t2 right from here to here is t2 and that will be 4.27 4.27 and I think I need calculator to calculate that. So we will have 9.8 multiplied by 4.27. That should be 41.85. So 41.85. And the unit is meter per second. 
And now let's do point C here. What is the total distance it travels? So it's going up first, D1, and it's going down for D2, right? So I will have D total. That should be D1 plus D2. We can just plug this value here. So we will have D1 is 12.26. And then plus D2 is 90.89.26. 26, which is, what is it, 12.26 plus 89.26, that should be 101.52, 101.52, and the unit here is meter, okay, I think that's all for this problem. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.